I'm back. We're going to try to read a couple chapters outside today since it's such a beautiful day, but I'm here. Uh, we're halfway through our book. We're starting with part two, chapter 29. There was a change in the weather for the worse. The air became unbearably humid. We know how that feels in Florida, don't we? Stanley was drenched in sweat. Beads of moisture ran down the handle of his shovel. It was almost as if the temperature had gotten so hot that the air itself was sweating. A loud boom of thunder echoed across the empty lake. A storm was way off to the west, beyond the mountain. Stanley could count more than 30 seconds between the flash of lightning and the clap of thunder. That was how far away the storm was. Sounds travel a great distance across a barren wasteland. Usually, Stanley couldn't see the mountains at this time of day. The only visible time that, that when they were visible was at sun up before the air became hazy. Now, however, the sky was dark off to the west, and every time the lightning flashed, the dark shape of the mountains would briefly appear. Come on, rain, shouted Armpit. Blow this way. Maybe it'll rain so hard it will fill up this whole lake, said Squid. We could go swimming. Forty days and forty nights, said X-Ray. Guess we better start building an ark. Get two of each animal, right? Right, said Zigzag. Two rattlesnakes, two scorpions, two yellow spotted lizards. The humidity or maybe the electricity in the air had, been, had even made Zigzag's hair even more frizzy and wild. It stuck out like he'd been struck by lightning. The horizon lit up with a huge web of lightning. In that split second, Stanley thought he saw an unusual rock formation at the top of one of the mountain peaks. The peak looked to him exactly like a giant fist with the thumb sticking straight up. Then it was gone. And Stanley wasn't sure whether he'd really seen it or not. Then he thought, I found refuge on God's thumb. That was what his great-great-grandfather had supposedly said after Kate Barlow had robbed him and left him stranded in the desert. No one ever knew what he meant by that. He was delirious when he said it. But how could he live for three weeks without food or water? Stanley had asked his father. I don't know. I wasn't there, his father replied. I wasn't born yet. My grandfather, your great-great-grandmother, was a nurse in the hospital where they treated him. He always talked about how she dabbed his forehead with a cool, wet cloth. He said that's why he fell in love with her. He thought she was an angel, a real angel. What about after he got better? Did he ever say what he meant by God's thumb or how he survived? Nope. He just blamed his no-good pig-stealing pig father. The storm moved off further west, along with any hope of rain. But the image of the fist and thumb remained in Stanley's head. Although, instead of lightning flashing behind the thumb, in Stanley's mind, the lightning was coming out of the thumb, as if it were the thumb of God. We're going to move on to chapter 30. The next day was Zigzag's birthday, or so he said. Zigzag lay in his cot as everyone headed outside. I get to sleep in because it's my birthday. Then a little while later, he cut into the breakfast line, just in front of Squid. Squid told him to get to the end of the line. Hey, it's my birthday, Zigzag said, staying where he was. It's not your birthday, said Magnet, who was standing behind Squid. It is too, said Zigzag, July 8th. Stanley was behind Magnet. He didn't know what day of the week it was, let alone the date. It could have been July 8th, but how would Zigzag know? He tried to figure out how long he'd been at Camp Green Lake. If indeed it was July 8th, I came here on May 24th, he said aloud. So that means I've been here for 46 days, said Zero. Stanley was still trying to remember how many days there were in May and June. He looked at Zero. He'd learned not to doubt him when it came to math. 46 days. It felt like a thousand. He didn't dig a hole that first day, and he hadn't dug a, uh, dug a hole yet today. That meant he dug 40 
four holes if it was really July 8th. Can I have an extra carton of juice? Zigzag asked Mr. Sir. It's my birthday. To everyone's surprise, Mr. Sir gave it to him. Stanley dug his shovel into their dirt. Hole number 45. The 45th hole is the hardest, he said to himself. But that really wasn't true. And he knew it. He was a lot stronger than when he first arrived. His body had adjusted to some to the heat and the harsh conditions. Mr. Sir was no longer depriving him of water. After having to get by on less water for a week or so, Stanley now felt like he had all the water he could want. Of course, it helped that Zero dug some of his hole for each day, but that wasn't as great as everyone thought it was. He always felt awkward while Zero was digging his hole, unsure of what to do himself. Usually, he stood around a while before sitting off by himself on the hard ground with the sun beating down on him. It was better than digging, but not a whole lot better. When the sun came up a couple hours later, Stanley looked for the thumb of God. The mountains were a little more than dark shadows on the horizon. He thought he could make out a spot where the top of the mountain seemed to jut upward, but it didn't seem very impressive. A short time later, the mountains were no longer visible, hidden behind the glare of the sun, reflecting off the dirty air. It was possible, he realized, that he was somewhere near where Kate Barlow had robbed his great-grandfather. If that was really her lipstick tube he'd found, then she must have lived somewhere around here. Zero took his turn before the, the lunch break. Stanley climbed out of his hole and Zero climbed down into it. Hey, caveman, said Zigzag, you should get a whip. Then if your slave doesn't dig fast enough, you can crack it across his back. He's not my slave, said Stanley. We have a deal, that's all. A good deal for you, said Zigzag. It was Zero's idea, not mine. Don't you know, Zig, said X-Ray coming over. Caveman's doing Zero a big favor. Zero likes to dig holes. He is sure a nice guy to let Zero dig holes for him, said Squid. Well, what about me, asked Armpit. I like to dig holes too. Can I dig for you, Caveman, after Zero's finished? The other boys laughed. No, I want to, said Zigzag. It's my birthday. Stanley tried to ignore them. Zigzag kept at it. Come on, caveman, be a pal. Let me dig your hole. Stanley smiled as if it was a big joke. When Mr. Pandansky arrived with the water and lunch, Zigzag offered Stanley his place in line. Since you're so much better than me, Stanley remained where he was. I didn't say I was bet. You're insulting him, Zig, said X-Ray. Why should Caveman take your place when he deserves to be at the very front? He's better than all of us, aren't you, Caveman? No, said Stanley. Sure you are, said X-Ray. Now come to the front of the line where you belong. That's okay, said Stanley. No, it's not okay, said X-Ray. Get up here. Stanley hesitated, then moved toward the front of the line. Well, this is a first, Mr. Pandansky said, coming around the side of the truck. He filled Stanley's canteen and handed him a sack lunch. Stanley was glad to get away. He sat down between his hole and Zero's. He was glad that he'd been digging his own hole for the rest of the day. Maybe the other boys would leave him alone. Maybe he shouldn't let Zero dig his hole for, for him anymore. But he needed to save his energy to be a good teacher. He bit into his sandwich, which contained some kind of meat and cheese mixture that came in a can. Just about everything at Green Lake came in a can. The supply truck came once a month. He glanced up to see Zigzag and Squid walking toward him. I'll give you my cookie if you let me dig your hole, said Zigzag. Squid laughed. Here, take my cookie, said Zigzag, holding it out for him. No, thanks, said Stanley. Come on, take my cookie, said Zigzag, sticking it into his face. Leave me alone, said Stanley. Please eat my cookie, said Zigzag, holding it under Stanley's nose. Squid laughed. Stanley pushed it away. Zigzag pushed him. Don't push me. I didn't. Stanley got to his feet. He didn't look around. Mr. Pandansky was filling Zero's canteen. Zigzag pushed him again. I said, don't push me. Stanley took a step backward, carefully avoiding Zero's hole. Zigzag kept after him. 
He shoved Stanley and said, quit pushing. Lay off, said Armpit, as he, Magnet, and X-Ray joined them. Why should he, snapped X-Ray. Caveman's bigger. He can take care of, your, of himself. I don't want any trouble, Stanley said. Zigzag pushed him hard. Eat the cookie, he said. Stanley was glad to see Mr. Pandansky coming toward them along with Zero. Hi, Mom, said Armpit. We're just fooling around. I saw what's going on, Mr. Pandansky said. He turned to Stanley. Go ahead, Stanley, he said. Hit him back. You're bigger. Stanley stared at Mr. Pandansky in, aston in astonishment. Teach the bully a lesson, said Mr. Pandansky. Zigzag hit Stanley on the shoulder with his open hand. Teach me a lesson, he challenged. Stanley made a feeble attempt to punch Zigzag. Then he felt a flurry of fists against his head and neck. Zigzag had a hold of his collar with one hand and, is hit and was hitting him with the other. The collar ripped and Stanley fell backward onto the dirt. That's enough, Mr. Pandansky yelled. It wasn't enough for Zigzag. He jumped on top of Stanley. Stop, shouted Mr. Pandansky. The side of Stanley's face was pressed flat against the dirt. The dirt. He tried to protect himself, but Zigzag's, Zigzag's fist slammed off his arms and pounded his face into the ground. All he could do was wait for it to be over. Then suddenly, Zigzag was off of him. Stanley managed to look up, and he saw that Zero had his arm around Zigzag's long neck. Zigzag made a gurgling sound as, he was, as if he was desperately trying to pry Zero's arm off of him. You're going to kill him, shouted Mr. Pandansky. Zero kept squeezing. Armpit charged into him, freeing Zigzag from Zero's chokehold. The three boys fell to the ground in different directions. Mr. Pandansky fired his pistol into the air. The other counselors came running from the office, the tents end out onto the lake. They all had their guns drawn, but holstered them when they saw the trouble was over. The warden walked over from her cabin. There was a riot, Mr. Pandansky told her. Zero almost strangled Ricky. The warden looked at Zigzag, who was still stretching and massaging his neck. Then she turned her attention to Stanley, who was obviously in the worst condition. What happened to you? Nothing. It wasn't a riot. Ziggy was beating up the caveman, said Armpit. Then Zero started choking Zigzag, and I had to pull Zero off of Zigzag. It was all over before Mom fired his gun. They all just got a little hot, that's all, said X-Ray. You know how it is. In the sun all day, people get hot, right? But everything's cool now. I see, the warden said. She turned to Zigzag. What's the matter? Didn't you get a puppy for your birthday? Zig's just a little hot, said X-Ray. Out in the sun all day, you know how it is. The blood starts to boil. Is that what happened, Zigzag? Asked the warden. Yeah, said Zigzag. Like X-Ray said, working so hard in the hot sun while caveman just sits around doing nothing, my blood boiled. Excuse me, said the warden. Caveman digs his holes just like everyone else. Zigzag shrugged. Sometimes... Excuse me? Zero's been digging part of Caveman's hole every day, said Squid. The warden looked from Squid to Stanley to Zero. I'm teaching him to read and write, said Stanley. It's sort of a trade. The hole still gets dug. So what's it matter who digs it? Excuse me, said the warden. Isn't it more important for him to learn to read, Stanley asked. Doesn't that build character more than digging holes? That's his character, said the warden. What about your character? Stanley raised and lowered one shoulder. The warden turned to Zero. Well, Zero, what have you learned so far? Zero said nothing. Have you just been digging caveman's holes for nothing? The warden asked him. He likes to dig holes, said Mr. Pandansky. Tell me what you learned yesterday, said the warden. Surely you can remember that. Zero said nothing. Mr. Pendansky laughed. He picked up a shovel and said, you might as well try to teach this shovel to read. It's got more brains than zero. The at sound, said zero. The at sound, repeated the warden. Well, then tell me, what does C-A-T spell? 
Zero glanced around uneasily. Stanley knew he knew the answer. Zero just didn't like answering questions. Cat, Zero said. Mr. Pandansky clapped his hands. Bravo, bravo, the boy's a genius. F-A-T, asked the warden. Zero thought a moment. Stanley hadn't taught him the F sound yet. F. Zero whispered, F. 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 Fact. How about H-A-T, asked the warden. Stanley hadn't taught him the H sound either. Zero concentrated hard, then said, chat. All the counselors laughed. He is a genius, all right, said Mr. Pandansky. He's so stupid, he doesn't even know he's stupid. Stanley didn't know why Mr. Pandansky seemed to have it out for Zero. If Mr. Pandansky only thought about it, he'd realize it's very logical for Zero to think that the H made the CH sound. Okay, from now on, I don't want anyone digging anyone else's hole, said the warden, and no more reading lessons. I'm not digging another hole, said Zero. Good, said the warden. She turned to Stanley. You know why you're digging holes? Because it's good for you. It teaches you a lesson. If Zero digs a hole for you, then you're not learning your lesson, are you? I guess not, Stanley mumbled. Although he knew they weren't digging just to learn a lesson, she was looking for something, something that belonged to kissing Kate Barlow. Why can't I dig my own hole but still teach Zero to read? He asked. What's wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with that, the warden said. It leads to trouble. Zero almost killed Zigzag. It causes him stress, said Mr. Pandansky. I know you mean well, Stanley, but face it. Zero's too stupid to learn to read. That's what makes his blood boil, not the hot sun. I'm not digging another hole, said Zero. Mr. Pandansky handed him his shovel. Here, take it, Zero. It's all you'll ever be good for. Zero took the shovel. Then he swung it like a baseball bat. The metal blade smashed across Mr. Pandansky's face. His knees crumbled beneath him. He was unconscious before he hit the ground. The counselors all drew their guns. Zero held, held the shovel out in front of him as if he were going to try to bat away the bullets. I hate digging holes, he said. Then he slowly backed away. Don't shoot him, said the warden. He can't get, go anywhere. The last thing we need is an investigation. Zero kept backing up. One past the cluster of holes the boys had been digging, then further and further out onto the lake. He's going to have to come back for water, water the warden said. Stanley noticed Zero's canteen lying on the ground near his hole. A couple of counselors helped Mr. Pandansky to his feet and into the truck. Stanley looked out toward Zero, but he had disappeared into the haze. The warden ordered the counselors to take turns guarding the shower room and the rec room all day and all night. They were not going to let Zero drink any water, and when he returned, he should be brought directly to her. She examined her fingernails and said, it's almost time to paint my nails again. Before she left, she told the six remaining members of Group D that she still expected all seven holes. And that's where we're going to end for today at chapter, the end of chapter 30. So we'll start on chapter 31 next time.